Good morning, explorers, and welcome to Aquarium Live. My name is Alicia, and I'm excited to be joining you from the Aquarium of the Pacific's Online Academy. I hope you're having a great morning. We're going to be doing some exploring today and learning all about how animals use their colors today. Now, we're going to have an opportunity to play some games. We're going to have an opportunity to check in with one of our Ocean Ranger friends, Captain Joe. And he's going to be helping us explore out around the aquarium so I can stay here in the studio. Now, I have a team of people helping me today. I have Amanda, who's doing all of our controls. And I have Stacy, who is available to take in your text. So if you would like to text in with questions right here at 562-286-1838. Uh, for our younger explorers, make sure that you have permission from your adult. And also just remember that normal texting rights do apply. Um, also, if you're watching this streamed after our live event, you can always email us at live at lbaop.org. That's live at lb for Long Beach Aquarium of Pacific.org. And so we're going to be doing our exploring, and I would love your questions, comments, observations, and uh, any participation as we play our games or explore. Now, I have sent Captain Joe to Tropical Pacific Gallery. This is a huge gallery that we have here at the aquarium. It's over 350,000 gallons, which is a lot. And there are hundreds and hundreds of animals that live in this big tropical gallery. And they all live around the coral reef. And I happened to notice last time I walked in, that was pretty colorful. So I asked Captain Joe if he could meet us up there. Oh, hey, Captain Joe, what are you doing? Uh, are, are you swimming? Well, hello there, boys and girls. It's Captain Joe here. And yes, as a matter of fact, I am swimming underneath water right now inside the tropical galley. I've finally mastered my technique of underwater breathing, just like my idol, the harbor seal. Uh, Captain Joe, I don't think you could be talking underwater. Doesn't matter. Um, Anyways, let's just go ahead and observe some fish. Uh, okay, okay, sounds like a plan. Oh, wow. Whoa, look at that eel! Oh, hi, Captain Joe! Hey. Uh, oh, string! She must be able to hold her breath underneath water as well. I don't know what that is. I, I, Captain Joe, I don't think you're underwater at, at all. Yeah. All right, you caught me. But someday I will be able to hold my breath underwater like my idol, the Harvest. Anyways. We are here in the Tropical Gallery, and I do have to tell you, boys and girls, we have a lot of very, very colorful fish here today. Well, Captain Joe, that's actually our topic today. Can you help us learn more about how animals well, use color? That is a very good question again, and we might as well do what we always do. Let's investigate. Okay. <laughs> Now, our ocean rangers are very good about making observations. So what does that mean? That means looking closely. Can, they, can you observe any colors, shapes, patterns, sizes? Yeah. So today we're focusing mostly on color, but there are a lot of ways that animals blend into their habitat. So we were looking at a tropical eel, but I wanted to show you in comparison one of our cold water eels. So this is a moray eel. Look at that face. See that face? Kind of looks like it's smiling at you. I think it looks like it's smiling at us. <laughs> so this animal here, what color do you notice? Hmm. Well, in a moment, we should take a peek at its habitat. Maybe my friend Amanda can show us where this animal is found. But just take a look. So this is a fish. It doesn't quite look like, I would say, a typical fish. Are there any parts that are missing? Any special colors? Well, to help us understand how this animal might be using its colors or shape um, or special things that it has on its body, sometimes it's important to look right behind and see what its habitat or its home looks like. And so behind me, I'm seeing, I'm observing some rocks, some seaweed, 
and maybe even another animal living in its home here. I think this is a lobster that's living in this little cave. So if we were to look behind, then we'd see a little cave here. So we're gonna switch over to where you might find a moray eel. Now this eel has a really long body. And again, it has that bright green color. Oh, wow. Amanda has found great footage for us. This is the moray eel. They can get five feet long. And I am five and a half feet tall. So if I were to lay down, it would just be a little bit shorter than me. And so this is, a, this is a, actually a large animal that comes out at night to hunt along the kelp forest. So this is a kelp forest habitat. And there are lots of little nooks and crannies down here. Now, if you have a long shape and you don't have fins sticking out the side, it's a little bit easier. Also, look at the color that we just saw. That color is very similar to some of our seaweed. Actually, look, kind of blending in in the back. You know, if the eel had chosen to hide, we probably wouldn't be able to see. Now, we have already had a question come in from Benjamin. How many ocean animals camouflage? Thank you so much, Benjamin, for introducing that word for us today. So when an animal is able to blend in, that we call that, the science word for that is camouflage. And you shout that out, camouflage! So being able to blend in is a really cool adaptation, a way that they survive in their habitat. And again, this is an example of a habitat. And there's an example of an animal like the eel using its color to blend in. Now I will tell you, I don't have an exact number, Benjamin, but we're gonna be exploring a couple different animals in several different habitats today. And maybe you can keep count and our explorers at home can help us keep count of how many different animals are using that camouflage. Now I would guess that there's probably a good number in not only the ocean, but where we live on land that use their colors every day. Can you think of any? Hmm. Well, we're going to lead into a, a game. Are you ready? So our game, I'll have Miss Amanda put up our, our question here. Ooh, are you looking closely? Did you put your Explorer goggles on? Okay, we are looking for an animal hidden behind these bubbles. Now we put the bubbles up because we didn't want it to be too easy. You have to look closely. This animal is an expert at camouflaging, blending in. I wonder, so this animal also lives in a kelp forest. Again, if you would like to share, if you're watching along with us and you would like to text in 562-286-1838, this animal is one of my favorites. It can creep along the bottom of a kelp forest habitat. Maybe just to give us a, a few moments for some of our answers to come in, uh, we'll put that kelp forest image back up, Miss Amanda, so we can take a look and we'll, sh we'll take a peek at where in this kelp forest we might find this animal. I'm so excited about this animal. I keep almost saying its name. <laughs> I have to be careful. All right, so we're looking. Now this animal actually is gonna be found in pretty similar places as the eel. It's going to be found along the rocks and in fact it can go very very shallow as well even along the tide pool. So you can find it as deep as this kelp forest which kelp forests are can be up to maybe like a hundred feet down so there's still enough sunlight coming down and that's important too if you're using all these colors you have to be able to see these colors to camouflage. Um, but it also if you're if you're down here, there's also some big shadowy areas, and we'll have to consider that when we think about blending in. All right, did you get a chance to think about some of the animal possibilities? All right, Miss Amanda. Oh, Gage says a two-spot octopus. And we have Alex, Arya, and Ender, and I'm sure there's lots of other explorers who have also guessed. Let's go ahead and reveal. Yay! Not only octopus, but I think some of you have been watching enough of our shows to know that it's a two-spot octopus. Very good. So this is an animal that we, we, I say we, there's a lot of us here that are really um, just fascinated by the octopus. Now, 
if you're looking close, you'll see not only has the octopus, let's see, there's its eyes. It has one, two eyes. Now, it's put together differently than us. So its eyes are here. Its brain is right in the middle. It's like the shape of a donut, which is pretty cool. And then all of its, all of its organs are right here in what we call the mantle. So it's like having our organs up here, our brain and our eyes, and then all of our, what we call our appendages. So these are the eight arms. And you can see this little spot. Now, if this octopus wanted to stop camouflaging and use its color to talk to another octopus, or even last minute, if it wanted to try to scare something chasing it, it could actually uh, flash this circle color to look like a big eye. It has one on the other side as well, which is pretty cool. All right, so Gage asked, do animals hide in the kelp leaves? That is a great question, Gage. Yes, there is a, I can think of a fish right now called a kelp fish, and its whole body, remember we said that its body can not only have color, but also shape that help them blend in. Well, it has a body shape very similar to a blade. These things right here, for everyone else who, who's watching, um, the, these parts, I think I have my kelp down here. This is my model kelp. It's quite big. Its shape. Oh, <laughs> hello, giant sea bass is this is just like this blade of kelp so it would have a little face down here has its little fins and even its tail and has the same color so you should look it up the kelp fish uh, maybe later if we have an opportunity we'll see if we can look up a picture but it is very cool that's a great question so remember shape and color can play a role for helping an animal camouflage even that octopus that we were looking at can change the texture of its body, meaning it can be smooth or bumpy. It can actually make itself look like it has ridges or even like little horns over its eyes. Yeah, we'll take a pick, uh, we'll take a, a peek at it. So if you look closely, there are some little ridges here along its mantle, as we were talking about, and along its body. And if you look, that's to match all the little bumpy texture that we would see here. So I think this is a, an absolutely fascinating animal. Oh, okay, so we have another question. There was a golden fish, but no golden rocks. Where does it camouflage? And that was from Kartik. Kartik, that is a great question. So we're learning about animals that blend in using their colors. Some animals, I think we're gonna learn, use their color to kind of like talk to other animals. They're not using their voice, right? Not like we are, but they're using their bright colors to say, um, sometimes stay away. So I think we were talking about the Garibaldi and we'll see if we can find um, some footage of our Garibaldi. So in this space that has a lot of kind of these muted colors, right? These browns, and it's very pretty, but it's browns and greens and various shades of greens. And you're right, some of it can be a little bit more golden. You're probably not gonna get a whole lot of camouflage if you're bright orange or kind of that golden color, right? But you are able to very clearly say, this is my territory. So if you were talking about that little uh, fish that had a heart-shaped tail, which is, believe it or not, is a cold water cousin to a uh, clownfish. It is just the biggest member of our damselfish group. Then it's using its color to actually say, stay away, this is my territory. Oh, she found one. Thanks, Amanda. There's one right there. It was easy to find. And that's the whole point of being that nice, bright color. It's saying, uh, it, well, they're kind of bossy fish. It's saying, back away. <laughs> now, uh, the giant sea bass, in fact, are probably hanging up a little higher because <laughs> this little fish is keeping its territory. And it will even boss around our big giant sea bass, which I think is pretty, um, pretty incredible. Uh, Ronan asked, do animals use camouflage to help them catch Ray. Ooh, explorers, what do you think? Do you think being able to blend in might help an, an animal catch its food? Yeah, that is an 
Excellent question. I wonder if you can think of some examples, explorers, of animals that can blend in to help them catch their prey. Well, I think we might be able to touch base with Captain Joe and see if there are any examples of this. That's a very great um, segue. So I think let's go ahead and check in with Captain Joe. Captain Joe, hey, what are you boys doing? And girls. I'm here at the tropical gallery observing, hiding out using camouflage. What I've found out is that these animals have many different colors and they use them for many different reasons. So, let's go observe and find out more. <laughs> okay, Captain Joe is trying to camouflage using that butterfly fish. Now, the butterfly fish is a great example. Now, we'll go back... Um, We'll, we'll touch base with Joe in a little bit because I, I want to ask him a little bit more about the question that you had asked about sneaking up on prey. But we're going to take a pause and we're going to talk a little bit about this fish because if you take a look, it's using its colors a little bit differently than the eel that we were looking at, right? The eel was one color. It was camouflaging kind of in those rocks and kelp that are also one color. And then this fish here which is our copper banded butterfly fish, is using its colors differently. Take a look. It has these nice bands all the way around its body. And these bands are helping to hide something. What, are the, what is the band hiding? Can you see? Yeah, you guessed its eye. Its eye is right here. So it's hiding its true eye and it's trying to highlight this fake eye in the back. So sometimes animals will use colors to trick other animals, which is super cool. So instead of trying to camouflage in um, completely, sometimes they use their colors to either break up their, their shape, so we call that disruptive coloration, so it's a little harder to see the animal, or they will try to fake out a predator. Now, how does this work? Well, if you're a predator, you want to catch prey right at its, its face so it can't swim away. You don't want to be chasing it. If you've played tag with someone who's a really good runner, you probably want to see if you can trap that person, right, before you give them a tag. Now, for our butterfly fish here, it's the same thing. Um, if you were trying to catch the butterfly fish, you probably want to be able to jump in front and grab. So the butterfly fish, you know, knows this, and it has this spot called a false eye spot. And so if a predator comes up from behind, and tries to grab the, the head, which is not really a head, the butterfly fish can all of a sudden dart in a new direction. And so it's, it's confusing. It also might look like a slightly bigger animal because the eye is just a little bit bigger. So that's pretty cool. So there are lots of examples of butterfly fish that have these same colors here, this, um, this yellow, this white, and this black on its body. Also something to notice, you can always learn a little bit by where an animal's mouth is and how it's shaped. Look at that tiny little mouth. So this animal lives in the coral reef. And uh, maybe we'll take a moment and just take a peek into that coral reef habitat when Amanda has a, a chance. And then I'll answer a few questions as we're watching. Whoa, take a look. So this is where we can find the copper banded butterfly fish. You can see there are a lot of animals that are using bright colors to help them. All right, Luke asked, what do Garibaldi eat? That's a great question, Luke. So Garibaldi like to eat little things that pass them. They will eat anything when they're smaller from little plankton to smaller fish. Um, they'll eat little, what we call invertebrates, like, like worms at the bottom. So basically anything that they can kind of pick off the bottom or catch as it passes its territory. So. It says, oh, she wrote it in there for me. Thanks, Stacy. She added a few things like worms, small anemones, sponges, and crabs. So watch out. <laughs> if you're smaller than a Garibaldi, you could be food for the Garibaldi. It sounds like they like to eat anything that they cross the path with. That doesn't surprise me. I like to call them bossy because they're, they're very tenacious. They will swim up and uh, they usually get what they want. All right, so we're looking at some animals in here and again, Take a look at some of the, the bright colors that we see. Later, we'll take a look, I think, at our Anthes exhibit, which is a zoom in 
of this kind of coral habitat. But I think for now, let's see, I think we're getting, oh, you know what? Yeah, I think Captain Joe is sending us a message that he has found somebody that can talk to us about animals that use their hey, colors to sneak boys and girls, up. I'm here with our seahorses, and I found my friend Jin. She's an aquarius here at the aquarium. Jin, what are some of the things you do here at the aquarium? I do a lot of things to take care of the animals here, including feeding and a lot of cleaning. Very nice, <laughs> very nice. Now, we're here with the seahorses, and we do know that they have very long faces and very curly tails, but we're learning about colors today. Can you tell us a little bit how they use color in their environment? Absolutely. Seahorses use color to camouflage or to hide within their environment, and because they're so well hidden, they can sneak up on their prey. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> now, our sneaking sounds very cool. Are there any other animals in the aquarium that sneak up on their prey? Absolutely. We have a lot. They are very hard to find, so we really need to use your eyes. I suggest you go ahead and head down the Blue Cavern and look at our giant sea bass. Mm, giant sea bass. I think that's something we definitely need to investigate. All right. Thank you, Jen and Captain Joe. I think we have some seahorse clips that we can take a peek at. Now, they mentioned this animal. Now, we don't often think of these adorable little animals as predators, but don't let them fool you. They have cute little faces, but they are predators. They just eat very tiny things. And what do they eat them with? Well, yeah. So here's the cousin, this is the dragon. They have this really long straw-shaped mouth. And we were talking about mouths earlier. And so they camouflage. The camouflage works both by avoiding predators, but also making it a little harder for prey, we're feeding our exhibit right here, to see the seahorse. So the seahorse might live around the rocks or might wrap itself around um, some of the, the kelp in there. You can see that they're pretty much the same color as the rocks. And they, oh, look, there's some babies. They have those tiny little snouts and it's, it's a really long mouth and it has this little suction at the end. So they'll just be drifting along. You're like, oh, how cute. And all of a sudden they suck in something. <laughs> Sometimes it's a lot bigger than you think. <laughs> like, oh, oh, it disappeared. Uh, it's still cute, but it <laughs> just ate that huge piece of food. Um, so we've been behind the scenes a couple times and I was always surprised at what they can just <laughs> slurp in. <laughs> so they, um, they're pretty cute. So London asked, do fish have hearts? Wow, great question. They do have hearts. Their hearts are a little bit different than ours. Uh, they have four parts to their, their heart um, and it helps move the oxygen that they're taking from the water around them. And how do they do that? Well, they have gills. So fish have gills. That's what one of the, the characteristics that make fish a fish. And those gills help take those tiny little bubbles of oxygen from the water. And then that heart helps move that through their system so that their bodies um, have all of that oxygen. All right, so we're gonna do a puzzle. Are you ready? I'm gonna put our number up one more time just in case you would like to participate, but you can always just shout out your answers. You can tell a friend, you can write it down, uh, but our text is 562-286-1838 if you would like to participate with us. All right, Miss Amanda, let's go ahead and show them our puzzle. Okay. So, not that number. <laughs> You're going to use this number here. All right. Did you notice an animal hiding? There's actually two animals that are hiding behind me here. So, we have taken a little bit of a pause just to, to peek at them. But I see, let's see, red, kind of an orangey color, and a little bit of black and white. I wonder, can you think of an animal that has those three colors? Also, there is an animal that, is, that it's wiggling around in that has lots and lots of little tentacles. Yeah, <laughs> you might see the whale, but ignore the whale, ignore the whale. That's, that's not what we're doing. All right, so if you think you know the answer, again, you can text in, you can shout it out. This is a tropical animal. But earlier, we were talking about the Garibaldi, which is its cold water cousin. So 
there's a big hint for you. We were talking a little bit about it earlier. All right, Miss Amanda, go ahead and show them what the answer is. Ah, oh, Balin and, and Ronan and Ender say clownfish. Good job, thanks for participating. I'm sure there are many of you at home also shouting out like, of course, Alicia, this is a clownfish, easy. <laughs> so our clownfish here is pretty cute. It has um, all of these colors. Now these colors, again, just like its cousin, the Garibaldi, aren't exactly blending in. They're using their colors a little bit different. So we talked about camouflaging, but colors can also be used as a little bit of a warning. So these um, clownfish, also known as anemone fish because they live in the sea anemone, are saying, back away, this is my sea anemone. Plus, you don't want to get too close because if you're another animal, you're going to get stung by the little stinging tentacles here. Now, the clownfish is covered, it's kind of gross, but it's cool, right? They are covered with a layer of slime, mucus, that helps protect them from those stings. So that, that is their special adaptation. All right, let's go ahead and check in with Captain Joe. I think he mentioned that he had found something cool at Blue Cavern. Uh, uh Cap Captain Joe, what are you doing? Oh, sorry. Damn, I'm hiding in this pretend seaweed or kelp to blend in with our kelp habitat. Oh, did... Uh, is that the giant sea bass I behind sure you? I sure did. Let's go ahead and take a closer look. Oh, cool. Now, boys and girls, here is one of our giant sea bass. Sometimes in the ocean, instead of blending into a rock, an animal will try to blend into the shadows or into the water itself. Now the dark mottled color of the giant sea bass allows it to lurk in the dark parts of the kelp forest, only to lunge forward when a small prey fish comes near and sucks it right into its mouth. The camouflage, paired with its careful slow swimming, make the giant sea bass almost ninja-like in its stealth even though it can eventually grow it away over 600 pounds. Now, boys and girls, these are just some examples of how these animals use color in their environment. I'm gonna send it back to you in the studio, and you're gonna learn a little bit more about animals and how they use their color in the wild. Captain Joe, what about animals that use stripes instead hmm. of spots? I'm pretty sure I saw a striped animal in the tropical Pacific gallery. How about you meet me there? Sounds like a plan. Thanks, Captain Joe. All right. Excellent. Now, we, uh, Miss Stacy shared with me that Anderson, Lou, Keeley, and Kartik had also said clownfish. Nice work, everybody. Thank you for participating. I really appreciate um, all of your answers and all of your questions today. Now, we are going to um, just zoom in a little bit because I think we have some questions. Take a peek at, again, one of those exhibits that we have here with the camera inside and show you a little bit of that, that coral reef zoomed in just to show you all of these colors. Now, most of the fish in here are called antheus, uh, but we'll occasionally see like a little angel fish swim by or a, what we call a bird ras. You have to look closely for it. It has a long mouth, kind of like a bird. Oh, so Brighton asked, what is the best hider in the sea? Ooh, that is a really good question. Well, I think the octopus, in my opinion, is the best at that because they can all of a sudden swim and then within a blink of an eye, they can be the same colors and even sometimes, again, the shape, their body can change shape, which is amazing. And they can just do it in just, just like that. Their body has um, special features that allow them to blend in. But in a tropical habitat, some other animals that I can think of, let's see, stonefish are another really, really good um, camouflager. And they look just like a piece of, of rock. 
or even um, what we call a frogfish. But I think the octopus to me is the best at hiding. Thank you for your question. Um, Kalia asked, if a fish has more, is more colorful, does that mean it's poisonous? Ooh, you know what? We, that is a great question. And I think Captain Joe was trying to figure out if that, um, if the use of stripes might happen to tell some of that story, because there are some animals that use either bright colors or stripes to warn other animals that they, they, they could be poisonous or have a way to defend themselves. Let's check with Captain Joe. Hey boys and girls, so these are the animals with black and white stripes I was talking about. These are our banded sea crates. We have one right there and they are very venomous animals and they use their coloration to give a warning off to other animals. They basically say, look out, I'm quite dangerous. They're very, very cool. All right, well that, that pretty much answers that question that we got in Captain Joe, wasn't that cool? Thank you so much for joining us. Wow, we've had a really good program today. So let's recap. So animals use their colors to blend in and hide. Animals can use their colors to blend in to catch their prey. Animals can use colors to try to trick another animal that maybe they have a, a fake eye or turned the other way around. And sometimes, Animals can use bright colors or stripes to give a warning to say, you know what, you shouldn't mess with me. I have something very special to help defend myself. Thank you so much, Explorers, for all of your participation. We have um, more programs coming up this week uh, today for our online academy. And again, if you have any questions that we didn't get to today and you have the opportunity you'd like to email in you can email at live at lbaop.org thank you so much everyone and we'll see you next time